Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah. It's Saturday. The weekend is here. Uh, getting a bit to a slower start today. It was raining. Uh, it was supposed to rain. It rained up till about 7.30 today. So the roads are drying up. They're pretty much there. So I've kind of been waiting for that. Did a little video editing, drank my smoothie, just finishing up my laundry here. Uh, getting everything on hangers and all that jazz. Doesn't mean it's going to make it into the closet, but they're on hangers, so I'll get there. Um, so I got a three-hour ride planned today on kind of just moderate terrain. There's a little bit of climbing, a little bit of just short climbs here and there, a little bit more rolling terrain than anything else. And um, I'm looking forward to getting outside because I really, I'm, I'm enjoying being out on the bike. I'm really liking being back outside after kind of a, a longer season off, um, you know, a bit of a long winter. Uh, it's been mild during this, this past winter, so I did get out more than I usually would, but I just, I just feeling a little bit stir crazy and getting outside and really enjoying it. But at the same time, today's ride, I am really nervous. I am nervous about how my legs are going to react today. Yesterday on my little, you know, uh, recovery ride if you will just kind of getting out of the village the first few minutes of my ride i thought my legs were going to seize up i mean really just kind of unbelievably it was kind of scary actually um that usually doesn't happen and i'm not like i'm not worried it's not a mystery to me uh last week my i had a 17 hour training week uh, the week before I was at like 16 hours. This week I'm probably going to be about 17, 18 hours as well. Um, and it was kind of a, a sharp jump once the weather got nice. You know, going from like 11 or 12 hours up to 16, 17 hours. Um, it's pretty significant. So, you know, my legs are just kind of reacting to that. Uh, they don't feel bad right now. We'll see. They didn't feel bad yesterday either. But um, we'll see what happens out on the bike and we'll see but i'm rambling so i'm gonna finish up my laundry here i'm gonna get ready to go no watch uh, i'm planning to head out around one o'clock so it'll be kind of the peak temperature and uh the sun might start to peak out but probably not so finish this up here and i'll get out of my ride all right i'm gonna try to give myself as much of an edge as humanly possible on this ride considering the fatigue in my legs i'm gonna hook up a couple of these sport legs here um I don't know if you guys have heard of sport legs before. I think a lot of cyclists have. It's in, you know, the Bicycling Magazine all the time. A lot of articles, a lot of affiliate advertising on, you know, bike forums and stuff. But I think this stuff really works. I think it works well. It's not really a snake oil thing or a chemical-based supplement. The primary or active ingredients are calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D, I believe. So they're proven vitamins and whatnot that kind of aid in you know recovery and lactic acid transfer and processing things like that it's stuff that you can take you know on your own if you want to buy a calcium supplement magnesium supplement vitamin d supplement but they've kind of formulated a ratio of these types of things put it in one nice little um, uh, complete package and obviously there's some other ingredients as well but uh, I think this stuff really works I've noticed a distinct difference between doing like a hard ride like uh, either with a lot of climbing or race like effort a group ride with them or without them and there's a distinct difference and I think it's more distinct than it can be explained by the placebo effect uh, they definitely um, they definitely help kind of take some of that burn it gives you that little extra bit of I, I don't know, like, you just can just squeak out that little extra bit out of your muscles before the pain kicks in that's going to deter you from putting in that extra couple of watts of effort or whatever. Um, so I'm, I'm taking it now about a half an hour before I start my ride. Uh, the instructions usually say, you know, half hour before. There's also a... Um, recommended use I think for after your ride to aid in recovery as well so you could actually use this as a regimen before and after your ride I usually use it before and then I also take magnesium supplements and I can throw them some calcium that way I mean it's it's I believe they're like 40 to 50 bucks a bottle so it's not a cheap supplement so I kind of preserve them for before the ride and then I kind of take like um, vitamins and whatnot for recovery after the ride because they're a lot they're a lot cheaper, and a lot of times you can buy your vitamins if you've got like a HSA uh, account or something through your workplace. Uh, vitamins are one of those qualifying purchases that you could use for the cards, so they're a lot more inexpensive, so you can kind of combine them for recovery a little bit better. But 
the thing for recovery is that a lot of us, even if we do a good cool down, as soon as we get off the bike, we're probably not particularly active. We're not, you know, working uh, working that lactic acid through continuously, whether we're, you know, going home and sitting on the couch or maybe we're going to work and sitting at a desk or, you know, maybe you're doing a late night ride and you're sitting down for dinner and then you're chilling out and dealing with kids and then you're going to bed. So this, uh, the sport legs combination or that combination of magne magnesium, calcium, and uh, vitamin D help to kind of continue what your cool down would be doing. Just keep things moving, keep things flowing so your legs don't lock up tight, kind of like mine did yesterday. So I'm going to take these now. I'll link them in the show notes below for those of you who are, are interested in trying the sport legs. A lot of you might already uh, be familiar or use it, but it's something I recommend. Um, I think they work great. So I think it's one of those those good supplements. Again, not not snake oil, not a bunch of, you know, fake ingredients, bullshit, you know, caffeine, taurine, nonsense, give you the jitters. This is just something that'll help you recover and perform better. All right, I'm procrastinating because I'm scared. All right, out on my warm up, did a little extra mini loop that I'm going around just to test things out before I go out on my actual route here. My legs actually feel okay. I'm surprised. Um, they're not 100%, but I'm not dying, so. My heart rate's a little high. I think it's actually a little bit of nervous energy here. But uh, hopefully that'll calm down now. Listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody in your life. In the years today, I'm listening to uh, a Muse playlist. The band's called Muse, if you've never heard of them. Um, Matt Bellamy, the front man for the band. Extremely talented individual. Classically trained pianist. Great guitarist. Singer with a range that's off the charts. The style's not for everybody. I would kind of equate it to a harder, cleaner, and a little bit more industrial version of Radiohead. And it's not something I listen to all the time, but I really enjoy their music. Um, as a musician myself, I have a great deal of appreciation of the complexity in the music. So that's what I'm enjoying on today's ride. Dear Sport Legs, I love your face. This ride, in all honesty, has felt effortless. I mean, my legs feel like butter today compared to yesterday. I just can't believe it. I mean, the sport legs, I really do think, have a lot to do with it. I'm targeting around 65% intensity, so it's not like I'm really pushing myself. But they're turning around. I mean, it feels like I'm putting 50 watts into the bike. And I'm in, you know, low zone three completely effortlessly. So you saved my weekend, sport legs. I appreciate it. This is not a sponsored video. It smells a little like barbecue sauce. Don't know why. It smells like barbecue sauce. So those of you out there who do your training primarily solo like I do, probably know the challenge of the additional weight you have to put on your bike to be prepared for any eventuality. My saddlebag probably weighs about three pounds with two to three tubes, depending on the length of my ride, two or three CO2 cartridges, the actuator, a hand pump, levers, a small uh, multi-tool. Then of course you got usually two bottles on your bike, especially if you're riding away from civilization, don't have the luxury of stopping. And whatever else you may need in case of emergencies. And, uh, kind of sucks. It's like when you take all that shit off your bike, you can't believe how much more responsive it becomes and how easier, how much easier it is to lug it uphill. The benefit of riding with a partner or with a group is the community effect. Everybody can carry a little bit less on their bike and on their person because you can count on the community or your partner to kind of bail you out if you run short. <laughs> help from you metric junkies out there. Those of you who kind of pay a lot of attention to the metrics when you're on your bike or on your runs. And this is specific to adding a power meter to your bike and evidently power meters to running. I don't know if anybody has one of those yet, 
But when you add a power meter to your bike, it makes your metrics smarter. It computes your power. It gives you more accurate uh, kilojoules or work. But I think it makes the calorie computation dumber. And this is why. So we're always burning calories. Whether we're sleeping, eating, shitting, riding, any of those things. Our body is always utilizing calories and burning calories. And I think in a very basic form, most people think about burning calories as kind of, well, when you get your heart rate up, you burn more. Now, to get your heart rate up, you have to do a degree of work. And that can come by way of power or kilojoules. Now, I am by no means an expert in anatomy and physiology or sports physiology. Uh, and I don't really know the answer to this. I'm just kind of taking a common sense approach. And I'd really like to do some research on this. And if you guys can chime in with any information, I'd appreciate it. So with the understanding that I don't have the answer, this is where I see the breakdown. So let's say for instance, you're doing a really high cadence, low tension workout. You're spinning your legs over 120 RPM, but you're at, let's say you're zone two. Your heart rate's probably up there. You might even be reaching your threshold in terms of your heart rate, depending on how efficient you can be at high cadence. But your power meter and the calculation that your, uh, your head unit will make isn't gonna give you credit for a whole lot of calories. Even though your heart could be pounding away and you can be sweating like an asshole, it's gonna think you're not burning much. Or let's say you put in a, a hard effort for a climb and you go up and over and then you start to coast a little bit for a descent, the calorie counter doesn't just slow down. It stops. Your body is still burning calories and it's burning them at a higher rate than it would at a standstill because your heart rate's still up. There's still that afterburn effect. But for some reason, you're not being credited for them when the Garmin or whatever head unit you have computes your calories based on power. And if you're a female or a smaller rider, you're being credited even less. Now granted, the smaller you are, the less calories you burn. But I think that proportional to your weight or size, I still think it's being underestimated. So here's where I think the problem lies when it comes to underestimating or undercalculating your calories. It's probably gonna come into fueling your nutrition. If you're trying to kinda of keep track of your calories burned against what you're taking in, and your Garmin could be misplacing the greater part of a thousand calories, and you're doing a hard ride, if you haven't dialed in your nutrition, you could bonk pretty easily. Speaking of bonk, it's shot block time. So I definitely take the calorie computation with a grain of salt. It's been proven that we don't even compute the calories on our nutrition facts for our food properly, let alone the calories that we burn. Some people are able to kind of compute their nutrition around kilojoules. And if you learn how to make that computation and you practice it, it might be a little bit more accurate than the calorie readout on your screen or your watch or whatever. But uh, it's not as straightforward. And when you're starting to break down, you don't want to do math. I don't know what the algorithm is that our, uh, our metric keepers, like our watches and our cycling computers, I don't know what they use to calculate calories. But I think there's some room for improvement. I think they need to maybe make it a little bit more a combination of heart rate and power. That's my opinion. But again, I don't know what they use, but I think it's less than accurate. But let me know what you guys think. I'm sure the ton of you know more than I do on this subject, and I'd like any insights. All right, home, three hours and like 15 minutes done. It's a good, good ride. Uh, I'm glad I got out there and did it. My fear was unfounded. Uh, did fine. I mean, really didn't have much of an issue at all. Felt good the whole ride. Felt like I could probably keep going, um, but I'm gonna reserve that for my longer ride tomorrow. I don't wanna push my luck just because I felt okay today. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm fully recovered and not really pushing uh, a little bit beyond where I probably should be, but it's okay. I enjoyed my ride. I'll get my long ride in tomorrow. Um, weather was a little bit strange. There was, I don't know if you wanna call it misting, <laughs> 
were spinning. I got a little bit wet a couple of times and it was just kind of like, almost like a haze of just misting water at me and uh, dried up pretty much on the way home. So whatever, good ride, had a good time. Now I'm gonna get myself cleaned up. Well, the sun's not going to come out for the rest of the day. I thought maybe I'd go take the drone out by the lake, but it's pretty ugly and gray out. So I'm gonna go out to the movies, gonna go see The Circle with Tom Hanks. Looks interesting. So that'll be what's on the agenda tonight. And that's about it. Probably come home, go to bed, try to get up early. It's supposed to rain in the morning tomorrow. And then uh, I'll get some shit done around the house and then probably around the same time I went today in the mid-afternoon I'll go for another ride five hours I'm excited you're excited I'm excited so I'm gonna end the vlog here because you can't come to the movies with me because they pretty much think that you're bootlegging sometimes they sneak my camera in there but I don't think they like that much but anyway thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one